Sam was a very happy, happy child. Actually, when Sam was born, I was working at the hospital. So I got to see Sam within a minute or less of him being born. The first word that I could ever think of is happy. I don't think I've ever had a bad time when I was hanging out with Sam. Every time he smiled, every time he laughed, somebody else had to smile and laugh. Like he walked in and the, like the gravity of the room would just shift. I met Sam when he was a freshman at, at Colfax. I was his uh, teacher and, and driver ed teacher. Well, he was going to be a junior at Lewis and Clark State College, and he was working at the deli in Rosars in Lewiston, which he absolutely loved. I knew Sam before I knew Jim and Lisa, because Scott and I, we've always had lunch together at Rosars, which is up the street, and we'd have lunch, and he'd kind of sit down maybe once in a while and say hi and have a chat. Well, Sam was a, was a very uh, outgoing individual, very personable was one of the first ones to step up to help out if something needed to be done. Uh, he was just a you know, really, really pretty good kid. My dad used to say that Sam had an old soul, and um, I believe that is true. The night before, you know, we, we knew that he had to go to Colfax in the morning. He was uh, stressed out, he couldn't sleep. So when we got him up and out the door, he, uh, he was kind of in a hurry, but he was happy. Um, you know, he was, just cracked a joke, gave a smile, and left. 911 location of your emergency? It's just right on Highway 195, just past the Albany turnoff, the one road to Colfax. Had a head on collision involving a semi and a car. 911. I'm on the road on the way to Colfax. This car just split another front house. You guys need to hurry. Okay, we're gonna get help out there. Oh my god. It was just a normal day. Came in. I was doing my rig checks and just seeing what I had to do for the day. And then about 10:32, we got a phone call for a head-on injury accident. Dispatching Colfax ambulance injury accident semi versus car 195 Albion Road. I waited for another EMT to show up, which was, which was Dan Young, and then we headed down there. Lincoln 11 one children out with two ILS. Daniel, it's 11026. It was not a very good scene when we got there, and it was obvious that when we got there that more than likely this was going to be a no-hope situation for the person in the car. When we approached the car, we checked for a pulse, noticed there was no pulse. I returned to ambulance 11 one in which at that time I uh, asked Whitcom to notif notify the uh, the coroner. 115, we call. 115. This is a confirmed fatality. Would you let Paul 64 know? Copy, confirm fatality 1034. When I get into situations like that also, is I'll, I'll look at the car, because I like to see how the car looks, what kind of happened, what was possible cause of the accident. And, and then I, by the time I walk back around, that was when the chaplain had come up to Scott and asked him about the, the name. He had a, the license plate and ran the re license plate and found out who was the registered owner. And that's when we know, then that's when we found out it was Sam. I ran to the car almost, because I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> it took a total different um, response. You know, because now we're dealing with one of our firefighters' kids. What, what went through my mind is, what, what are Jim and Lisa going to do? I noticed the sheriff's car in front of the shop, and there was uh, Ken McNaughton and Ron McMurray standing there, and they said, we want to talk to you. When they told me, I, Sam was the furthest person from my head. I think they had to say it three times, and then I just didn't believe them. I was like, no, they're mistaken. And when I looked at Jim, I knew that um, it really was true. I was just sitting in uh, my seventh period class, last class of the day, and I got this weird text from somebody I knew who asked, hey, is Sam okay? And I was just sitting there thinking, well, yeah, of course he is. So then I texted Strider because that's kind of a weird thing to for somebody to ask. And I said, hey, what's what's going on with Sam? And he told me Sam passed away today in the car accident. I was told everything was clear. So I wanted to go see the accident scene. I was able to get through the the barricades. I just told him who I was. And I took the car and I turned it around 
so that Lisa would not be facing looking at the accident scene. I parked about 100 yards away and I walked up to the scene itself. Sam was no longer there. He's already, he's already been taken to the funeral home. I've been on several accident scenes and so looking at the car the way it was, I know Sam didn't suffer. It was instant. Cell phone records indicated that he sent a text and to seconds late, I mean, a friend same, of his yeah. at 10.21 a.m. on that Friday. And that's when the cash hurt. And the call came out at 10.22. The Washington State Patrol's report actually has a lady saying that Sam passed her. He was looking down at his phone. I said within two seconds, not even that, it was boom and he was, the truck was veering to the ditch. But. When I found out it was distracted driving, I had actually a lot of emotions. The first one was just disbelief that my son was dead because he decided to text. And that's how I felt. And then I went to see him and I, had, I was very, very upset, of course. We left, we came back to see him the second time and that's when I actually closed the door and yelled at him. Really, I'll be honest with you, after that, I wanted to quit. Uh, I just, I didn't want to be an EMT anymore. After we lost Sam, um, we went to get his stuff and his um, dog, Anna. So we brought her home and she immediately ran, went downstairs to where his room was and of course he's not there. And it was a good month of we just had to try to get her to eat. Him and Anna were closer than I think he'd been with any person. When he left, her whole foundation was gone and she actually laid by the door. She still looks for him. Not long after Sam's uh, passing, uh, Jim came to me and asked if he could come in and talk to my classes. I pretty much, lately, I bring Anna with me. I talk with the uh, young kids at the Jarvis Education class. 30 years ago, we were all in discussion of putting your seatbelt on. In the cell phone issue, it's the same way. New technology is just one of those things that has become a bad issue. Since uh, the invent of the cell phones, there's more things in the car to be distracted by. All kids have cell phones now. They're always texting each other. They're always calling each other. Uh, it's, just part of, it's just part of life. I've had a phone since I was 13 years old. And well before this incident happened, you know, I thought, you know, it's, it's okay to text and drive. Nothing's ever going to happen to me. You're new, so you're going to be driving and you're going to be doing, you know, everything you're supposed to and then you get comfortable. It's when you're comfortable you need to be extra careful. There's no second chance, there's no do-overs. Distracted driving is, is, is life-altering, life-changing. It, it can wait, it, it really can. It's time to put the phone down. Turn off their cell phones. Put them someplace where they're out of reach so that there's no question that you're gonna be paying attention to what you're doing. You know, it's, it's something that didn't matter to me before and it does now. Just put your cell phone away, it's not that important. In the blink of an eye, our lives changed. We will never be the same. Sam left behind family, friends, and a community whose none of their lives are gonna be the same ever again. He also left behind Anna. She has no idea why he never came back. The sign you see now in front of you is now on the highway where Sam lost his life. SR-195, mile marker 31, six miles from home.